This video is to help you choose a topic for internal assessment for IB Physics. It's the same for HL and SL, and it's based on my many years of teaching and as an IB examiner. So a lot of different courses have different nuances when they have their internal assessment. And so these are specific to physics. So one of the things I want to say is when you choose a topic, make sure you stay within the IB syllabus. It's better to choose a simpler topic and explain it well than try and do something that's more complex and you have difficulties being able to explain it completely. The other thing I would say is there's three topics here that I would suggest you do not choose. The relationship between a frequency, tension in a string, the relationship between the concentration and the index of refraction, and air resistance acting on a parachute. These are ones that have been done over and over again, like dropping a ball into a crater of sand and seeing how it gets affected. So much so that the examiners have seen them so often and they already have ideas of exactly what the pitfalls are and where things should be improved. And if you haven't met those expectations, then what's going to happen is your grade will drop. Okay, so if you think about it in terms of normally we suggest you have, you know, two or three ways to improve, well, the examiners already have two or three set things they're looking for. So if you're beyond that, then you might end up saying, ah, oh, you've missed some major ones. Whereas if you have something that's a little bit more unique, then your two or three are probably going to be that much more important and give them that much more credibility to your opinions. So if I'm saying to stay within the syllabus, it's so much information. Where should we start? How do we get an idea? Well, to be honest, some of the best places I think are your everyday life. Look at a toy store, a hardware store, spend some time going through them and say, well, I wonder how this works. Is this actually related to anything I've done in the last year in IB, right? You're probably doing this between IB1 and IB2, so you've done a whole year worth of information of just like, how can I apply it? That's really what we want you to do. Other places to go and look would be things like Popular Science or Nature magazines. Remember, we're looking for a springboard of, hey, that would be a cool thing to explore further. We want you to do good science well. We're not looking for Nobel Prize within physics. We are asking you to take all of the work that you've been doing and saying, I can see how to use it. Another way to be doing this would be to look at some of the experiments or demonstrations you've done in class and say, well, this is a way I've done it. Well, what if I did it a different way? Or in class, this was my independent variable and this is my dependent variable. What if I had a different independent variable? Or how about I measured it from a different way? These would be all giving you ways to make your own experiment. Okay, We don't want you to just pull one out of a textbook and say, hey, here's an experiment I haven't done before. There needs to be some kind of part of you in that. And finally, one of the most important things is don't just Google. Okay, We don't want to deal with plagiarism. We don't want to deal with something that everybody um, has seen before. We have to have a bit of you. This needs to be your internal assessment. Okay, so if I'm going to give you an example of how to make a internal assessment and come up with an idea, um, I can't just walk around the toy store or hardware store or things like that. So I've got another way to do this. I have a website here from Harvard University. And remember, we're still staying within our syllabus. So no, I'm not asking you to go do some university level physics. Uh, but I want to show you how you can take some ideas and expand them when you're looking for some inspiration. Okay, so I have the um, link there that you can check this out. And let me just show you quickly how you can actually go through and start thinking about how do I make an IA from a simple demonstration. Okay, so here's the website once I've clicked on that link. And let's go to light and optics.
going to go to light and optics and let's go down to let's try polarization okay so in polarization let's check and double refraction okay so here is showing me a demonstration using a piece of calcium calcite if we look at this we see that there are two images of the dots and crosses through the piece of calcium calcite now if I move on down it actually is going to show me how it works and in this case light coming through has two rays coming out and notice that they're both polarized and the one that goes straight on through they're calling the ordinary ray is polarized in one direction and the extraordinary ray has been refracted even though the angle of incidence is zero and notice it's polarized the other way now it actually is going to tell me all about it here and how I would set it up and some interesting things about this demonstration now this is just a demonstration so how can I turn that into an internal assessment well in the reading it also tells me that the ordinary ray satisfies Snell's law but the extraordinary ray doesn't so maybe I'm going to set something up where I'm going to then test to see if that is true so as you know from your classes already I could then have varying angles of incidence measure my angle of refraction and I would have to do that appropriately because I need the angle of refraction in the crystal and then maybe I could go through and I could see whether or not that's true another thing I could do is use it to see well we also know from dispersion then we put white light through a prism that it gets broken up into the different colors in the spectrum right the nice pretty rainbow perhaps I could take this and I could use different wavelengths of light and I could see whether or not that angle of deviation between the ordinary ray and the extraordinary ray is consistent with the wavelength so that's how I could take some small little piece of um, material here and that I could start to change some things remember we want to think about well what one thing would I change and what one thing would I measure so here's a unique idea of how I could use something as simple as index of refraction to actually come up with my own internal assessment So I said, make sure you don't just go to a textbook and try and pull out the same experiment other people have done all around the world. So how important is this idea of the personal engagement? Well, it is going to be two marks out of the 24. Okay, so it's not as important as the exploration and things like that. But, and this is a really big but, very, very important, we have to make sure you're not doing plagiarism. So if you've used somebody else's method, you need to make sure you reference it. So just give credit to where credit's due. If you've got an idea and it's been based on something, make sure you give it credit. One other thing, remember your IA will go through turnin.com, so please beware. And just changing a word here or there, it does get flagged. Okay, we do want this to be your idea and your work. It can be based on others. The idea also with personal engagement is don't be superficial. Don't tell me that you've always found this interesting ever since you can ever remember. And it's something that you probably never thought of or had any dealings with. I want you to think about personal engagement more about how you've made this your own experiment rather than how important it is to you personally, but rather how you have shown you through. And in the next slide, I'm going to show you some examples from the IB. Now I know this is a big no-no. There's a lot of words on this screen, but you see I have them in quotes. I've taken them from the IB Physics Subject Report for November 19. It's really important that you see what we're trying to get across when we talk about personal engagement. It is not a single paragraph that you add in the beginning of your internal assessment. 
It is more about creativity, innovation, and your independent thinking. So look at that first paragraph. Remember I said stay within the sim syllabus, nice and easy. It's better to be able to explain something well than to have something more complicated. We want a well-defined research question. That means one independent variable, one dependent variable, and there may be a few controls in there. So for the one that I was just giving, I could say, how does the wavelength of light affect the angle of deviation between the ordinary and extraordinary rays created from calcium calcite? The other thing that comes up in subject reports is they talk about the different strengths that they've seen from the different IAs that they've marked and different weaknesses. So strength, notice those words in there, independent thinking, initiative, creativity. Now it does have something in there where it says, or when there's personal input into the design or implementation. They're really talking about not how it's always been your favorite, but how you've made the experiment your own. How did you put your own idea on there? And again, don't try and get too complex. It just doesn't want to be the same thing that we can find in the textbook. And finally, look there in terms of the weaknesses. Overemphasizing personal significance, artificial comments about your personal interests or how it's so important, never before has man ever thought about. Those kind of things just don't really work. Okay, so I hope this has helped you with some ideas, how to come up with new ideas, how to take and create an investigation. Remember, start with looking at some, an idea that, hmm, I wonder how that works. Even best if you can relate it to something in real day life. Okay, choose a single independent variable. What one single thing are you going to change? and make sure it's quantitative. It needs to be measured. Likewise, one single dependent variable. What are you going to measure to see the effect of the independent variable? It needs to be quantitative. I need to be able to measure with numbers. And then all of those things are going to have to be held the same so that we don't have anything else affecting your results. If you start with a really good research question based on something you can talk about, something you can explain, then you're going to get the best kind of result from your IAs.